and welcome to Retro Roulette, home of the Dunkletons. I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Dane Fort Joan. Where are they? I want to see the Dunkletons. <laughs> Jason Amherst. Uh, I didn't realize this was a zoo. <laughs> and Billy Carter. I'm the Dunkleton. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Woo! We still have two vetoes. And uh, I have already spun. I don't know about this one, guys. Uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. Wizardly, no. Wizardry this, 5? This is still... This is still better than a sports game. It's Capcom, so I guess show. I... Uh, it's Capcom, so I guess it's not all terrible. And it's published by Capcom. <laughs> this, yeah. this is a franchise that was more known for being played on PC in the 80s. For some weird reason, Japan enjoyed it. Well, Wizardry inspired the first person dungeon quest. crawler. Oh, I see. Uh, well, it inspired Gilgamesh Tavern. Yeah, it, no, it did inspire like the majority of RPGs like Shin Megami Tensei and uh, Dragon Quest. Go a cleric and a thief. Temple of Kant. Right, I, just can't. Temple. I just I just can't. More like the Temple of Can. Here we go. Come on, yeah. you gotta have a good attitude about it. <laughs> Uh, whoops. Did I accidentally <laughs> leave the damn thing? I'll turn it back. Oh, yeah, this is primitive. Oh, shit. You surprised the monsters. It was their birthday. Got them a cake. <laughs> so nice of you. Oh, boy. Slimes. <laughs> hey, we beat them. That's easy. Oh, yeah, it's a slime. <laughs> you get gold! Did I go in the door? And yes, I did. And a helmet and a sword. Did you expect it to be like this? No. I was not expecting this. I was not expecting it to be Shadowgate. Yes. Well, no. It's close to Shadow. I entirely yeah. expected this. Oh, I did too. Ouch. I imagine, I imagine my character just slamming into the wall face first. Oh, an hour counter. Lady Stingers. I fought a what couple the? of them in my day. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. Are we sure that's not just a uh, scorpion? You missed. No, I, the, the first fighter hit, but the second one missed. Now he missed. Damn it. You butthole. You pimple. See here, Wizardry 5. This originally came out in 1988 for the Apple II, Commodore 64, and IBM PC. I knew it. Then the PC-88 and PC-98 in Japan in 1990. Uh, the FM Towns PC in 1990. Uh, PC Engine CD in 1992, and then finally the Super Nintendo. Fight. The FM Towns Marty? Yep. I, I just like saying the name of that system. It's funny. Marty! It's, it's, it's the weirdest name. Oh, and... Oh, encounter. Apparently also re-released via the Satellaview on the SNES as well. Satellaview? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the Satel of you. <laughs> um, the Satel of you. An encounter. Five reptiles. I believe that only came out in Japan. Uh, yep. Only came out in Japan. We never had the Satel of you service in America. Uh, 
It was all. It, yeah. Wizardry yeah. Five was based on a game that Bradley had previously written and pitched to Sirtek. Sirtek asked Bradley to rewrite the game to fit into the Wizardry franchise. Finished in 1986, but held back for two years while Wizardry Four was completed. After Wizardry 4, which did not upgrade the graphics from the first game, sold poorly, they advertised Wizardry 5 as breaking away from the Wizardry system of the past. Okay, so this game is almost 40 years old. Yeah, considering that the original was in 1988. Well, it originally was made in 86. Well, no, I mean, like, the guy originally meant to release it in 86, and they pushed it back by two years. Oh, okay. So it didn't so, come out yeah. until 88. Yeah, but this game is almost 40 years old. Oh, my word. Yeah. Oh, and here's I'm... the crazy thing. It came out in Japan November of 1992. We didn't get it in America until 1994, and at that point, it really felt ancient. Oh, it, uh, yeah. Yeah. We already yeah, had, this, like, this Final game. Fantasy IV in America. Or Final Fantasy II, rather. My like, God, we had beats... way better RPG like, games by then. This this beat some of the NES games were better than this. Yeah. Like, I mean, like Dragon Fantasy. Quest 3 and Dragon Quest 4 were great. Uh, Final Fantasy? Yep. I have seen Especially better Final games. Fantasy 3 and... I, I've <laughs> seen better looking games on the Game Boy. <laughs> and I've, I've, seen better, I've seen better graphics on Tiger Electronic games. Oh, let's not go that. Uh, review, reviewing the SNES version, GamePro opined that though the non hostile monsters, riddles, and puzzles, are admirable improvements from previous games. The gameplay is still outdated compared to other games such as Final Fantasy, noting in particular the need to repeatedly re-enter the same dungeon and the lack of multiple save slots. Just the lack of movement. <laughs> I mean, you can really tell that this was a, meant to be a PC game in the 80s. Yep. Now, mind you, back in '88, this was wow. Look at this. But whoa, the graphics, dude! My, I feel like I'm actually walking down a hallway. If I wanted to walk down a hallway, I just go walk down a hallway. I mean, if I wanted to play a hallway simulator, I'd play Final Fantasy Thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It's go down hallway, fight monster. Keep going down hallway, fight monster. And there was a time at a, uh, there where they, it was really hallway oriented. <laughs> it's all about uh, it's all about uh, the the cutscenes and the storyline that they didn't even put into the game because they didn't know how to in like actually put storyline into the game they were like oops um uh here you go here's a bunch of lore nuggets that you can read in the menus uh because we were too lazy to figure out how to integrate them into the actual game yeah it's not liked that one is not liked um uh, now me on the other hand uh i i i really don't care for any final fantasy game it, it's not that i hate them it's just they're not my type of game I, I, I like them all the way up to 10. Even just, even uh, 12 yeah. is a bit of a stretch. I'm just not a big JRPG guy. I mean, yet I play Pokemon, but that's like RPG light. Say, you know I am I, mean? I am a massive RPG nerd, and like, yeah, Final Fantasy has really declined in quality, although I would like to give 16 a shot. Eh, but 16, I, I wouldn't consider 16 an RPG. It's more of a beat em up in a way. Yeah, no, like they, they got the freaking battle system, dude, from uh, like Devil May Cry 5 to work on. Now, it. now I'm going to give it this much. It does have RPG elements. You can level up and 
your weapons and armor and stuff like that. But I think they were trying to give it a true open world feel. You know what I mean? Because some people are getting tired of, okay, I hit you. All right, now it's your turn to hit me. Now I hit you. Now it's your turn to I hit mean, me. That's just the genre, though. Like, that's yeah. the style of game. You know, like, if I wanted to play a beat em up hack and slash game, I'd play a beat em up hack and slash game. If I want to play an RPG, I'll play an RPG. You know, you can put RPG mechanics in a beat em up hack and slash. That works too. It's very doable. The problem is how far away from the original game are you really going to get before it's no longer the game? It's what, what is it like a, a, a ship of, uh, uh, I wanted to say Damocles. I'm like, no, that's sort of Damocles, uh, ship of thesis, sort of, Damoc sort of Damocles. You mean? Well, yeah, it's sort of Damocles, but the other, other thing is like the ship of thesis, I think is, is yeah. the, uh, thing where it's like, Oh, if you take apart the boat and you rebuild it, <laughs> You know, is it the um, same boat? Is it the same boat? You know, now how many parts of that original boat are left in the boat after you've taken it apart and rebuilt it enough times? That's kind of yeah. what's happened to the Final Fantasy franchise. Yeah. You know, like it's it's cool to experiment, but I mean, I feel like at its roots, Final Fantasy kind of did an every other game sort of thing where every other game was kind of experimental. It's like, okay, Final Fantasies 1, 3, and 5 were very D&D-ish. They were all about the job systems, create your own character, not very story-intensive, more about the mechanics. Final Fantasies 2, 4, and 6 were all about the story. You know, yeah. and that's kind of how they differentiated and then they decided, like, okay, well, seven, we're going to go in a weird direction because it's seven. Eight, we're going to go even weirder because, you know, I don't know. And then nine, they're like, oh, let's go back to tradition. And it's like, see, that's kind of how I feel the franchise should keep going is, like, alternate between tradition and experimentation. Don't just throw out the baby in the bathwater and give us something completely different and go, it's Final Fantasy now. On my TV right now, Jace, they're showing this game, and it looks like it's based on that one city in China, you know, the one that's completely underground. Oh, wow. It's Garugamesh's Tavern. City. Yeah, pretty much a city under a city. There's a water <laughs> under the water. <laughs> There's a war uh, at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, uh, it's called Paranormal. The game is called Paranormal Hong Kong. <coughs> huh. All right, it says Paranormal HK, but I assume that it's Hong Kong because it has a bunch of Chinese calligraphy everywhere uh, in this game. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so that's great, man. Yeah, it's great. It's that's 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 great. So, Mike, what do you think of this game so uh, far? Boobs. Okay. So it says a button is supposed to finish, but it's not doing anything. Boobs. 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 <laughs> boobs. I love squishy boobs. Big old fat titties. Squishy, squishy boobs. Fuck, I love boobs, though. I just really love, love them. 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 <laughs> Put them just in my so mouth and swirl the boobs around. I'd Did rather say... watch boobs than a movie. Did you just say put them in my mouth? Put them in my mouth. Oh. Huh. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I don't have <laughs> a muff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just kind of... Kind of weird. I can't leave. Kind of weird there. Can't leave the screen. I'm hitting A button. Oh, it's, finish and it's not and finishing. Put your willy in between the titties. It's a Surtex software. 
founded by Norman Sirotek, Robert Sirotek, and Robert Woodhead. <laughs> Woodhead! <laughs> Name that sounds like a medication. And Oh, Woodhead. there we go. Gotcha. Uh, I, had to, I had to put enough points in to, to get a class. Yeah, and but then, here's, then here's something play. fascinating, uh, Billy. Robert Woodhead is not only co-creator of the Wizardry franchise, but also uh, co-founder of the anime licensing company Animigo. Oh, okay. But it's not, yeah. as, not, as, not as crazy as what Craven Moorhead did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank apparently you. uh Animago has uh published many game uh many games, many anime over the years, many classics. Uh Urusei Yatsura, You're Under Arrest, Vampire Princess Miyu, Otaku oh, no I Video. Under, I love Under Arrest. That that show was so funny. Yeah. Uh Bubblegum Crisis, the OVA, uh and Kimaguri Orange Road. Uh, under arrest is hilarious. Um, what are they, they are currently Ur owned by Media OCD. <laughs> Media OCD. <laughs> on, on yeah, they they still uh, they still publish stuff to this day, too. The dub of "You're Under Arrest" is funny. There, there's this one. One character, she's a little nerdy, and I can't remember her name. And and one of the uh, uh, police officers was formerly a man in this show, and they had a supernatural episode, and the, this uh, officer uh, started walking around naked, and. <laughs> Dirty cop says, everybody could see her thingy. <laughs> he could see her thingy. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think it's, uh, what was it, Dominion Tank Police or something like that? Uh huh. I freaking had the hot cat girls with the, like the big freaking heavy metal hair. Uh huh. Oh God! Late that is '80s, some good early shit. '90s anime. That, that, yeah, that was a heyday of anime. Just some of the best animation and just some of the most raunchy humor. Yeah, because the two freaking cat girls did like a strip tease in front of the cops, completely distracting yeah. them, and then ran away. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Ha ha!" And they had that weird perv look, you know, where the tongue comes out a little bit and the jewel. And they're and they're sweating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, <laughs> where they end up looking, their head ends up turning into looking like a potato, basically. You know, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, it was some boy. rocks. Anyway, uh, thoughts on Wizardry Five: Heart of the Maelstrom, Dane. That was an extremely boring game. Um, I even put us in the game, and it was still boring. We all died. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm ne I've never been an RPG fan to begin with. And games like this are the reason why. I just could not get into it. I was actually falling asleep. So, uh, yeah. Jason. Yeah, I'm an RPG nerd, and even I think this sucks. Billy. You have a better time doing pencil really? and paper RPGs. You know, play some the actual D and D with your friends around a table. You'd have Roll more fun dice. doing that. Roll some dice, have some miniatures. You'd have more fun doing that because you're having actual human contact than sitting at your computer staring at a screen like, okay, I'm gonna be playing by myself. I'm so lonely. That's how it looks like. This is <laughs> early. okay. Uh, this, this is for the nerds that had absolutely no friends. Not even the, not even for D and D, because no one wanted to play with them because their underwear stunk and their breath. Get to the point, William. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not an RPG guy 
really either. Uh, there are a couple that I that I play that I that I am okay with, like Zelda. But um, with that being said, like this is not one of them. No, thank you. Scores out of ten, Dane. Zero. Jason. A very gracious two. Billy. For history reasons. I'm going to give one because it's high fantasy. Zero. Uh, yeah, you have to be high to live this fantasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't even think I'm going to enjoy this drunk. Let's spin I, this wheel again, see what we're going to play. Oh, boy. Hey, oh, at least this was more entertaining than a Three Kingdoms game. Oh, no. LJN. You know what? Vito. Vito. Uh, all right. Vito. Jace has initiated the veto. Billy, Dane. Billy says veto. Um, yeah, fine, Vito. Okay. We are vetoing. Billy, stop now, beating this was, me. Now, if this was NBA Jam, I would have been like, yeah, play it. But no, yeah, is... LJN didn't make NBA Jam. <laughs> All right, so we're down to one veto. No, I think this game had a really bad, like, like nausea-inducing, like mode seven graphics thing going on too. Could be oh, another veto. Could be another veto coming up next. This <laughs> oh, is the human racing game. Yep. It's, 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 it's. Whoa. Vito. Vito's been initiated. Billy, Jason. Ah, uh, Vito. Jason. Grand pricks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Vito. Let's go. This is craziness. Grand pricks. All right. Uh, that, is all to, that is all of our videos. Fuji Television. That's all of our vetoes, unless we land on extra veto. So that means we have to play this. I guess we'll find out. I'm not sure, but I... Then again, I don't, I, don't know if I, ever, I don't know if I've ever heard of this game. So... Mindscape! Boy, Mindscape. Bitmap. Bitmap Brothers. Oh. 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 Gods! The puzzle game. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Just... Begin quest. The uh, no, city. It's a city. It is a uh, platformer. And it's an Amiga game. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at the guy. <laughs> it's Amiga. You uh, can tell. Yep. Just, just by uh, how quickly. You Amiga and Atari ST in 1991. You are Hercules in a quest to achieve immortality. Ported to the Acorn Archimedes, Mega Drive, PC-98, <laughs> SNES, ported, and Atari Jaguar. Ported to the, the oak tree outside my bedroom. The Acorn Archimedes. That British computer that sucked so bad. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I've seen videos about that computer. It was not popular at all. Womp womp. Uh, the yeah. Bitmap Brothers, British game developer founded in 1987. Uh, known for the scrolling shooter Xenon, uh, followed by Speedball, uh, prior to becoming the publisher of their own games under Renegade Software. Uh, they were pr distributed by Imageworks what? and Konami. Why am I not picking it up? They're from Wapping, United Kingdom. Oh, there we go. Wapping. They publicized themselves as rock stars and were featured in press posing in dark glasses, standing next to the hel helicopter of Robert Maxwell, owner of Mirrorsoft, publisher of a number of their games. 
Uh, after 2002, they released ports of several of their games for Game Boy Advance and Pocket PC. Uh, and since then, licensed their old games and properties to other companies interested in attempting re-releases for modern platforms. So, in other words, we 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 try to we try to uh, wee wee. off our laurels here. You just said wee wee. Uh, they also made the Chaos Engine series. Chaos Engine? Oh, no! Speedball. A video game based on a violent futuristic sport that draws on elements of handball and ice hockey and rewards violent play as well as goals. So, Rollerball. Not to be confused with Mike Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Bailey! Gotta admit, the box art for their games was pretty metal. You know, the first impression of this game, it actually looks it actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, it's, music it's, by it's, Nation 12. It's giving me Duke Nukem 1 or 2 vibes, which is not a bad thing. Nation yeah, those 12? games were good. Yeah, Duke Nukem War games Guardians were good. have invaded and usurped the Citadel of the Gods. The gods offer any hero who can succeed in retaking the citadel one favor. The hero who comes forth asks the gods as their favor to be granted a seat amongst them as an equal. The gods are only comforted by the hope that the hero will fail. After the last boss is beaten, the gods prove true to their word, and the last image is the hero becoming a being of light as he ascends to Mount Olympus. Any hero asks for one favor. And the hero steps forward and says, can I borrow $10? I will totally pay you back next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> can I borrow five bucks? I need, a, I need cigarettes. Can I, can well, I get that uh, tree fitting? <laughs> Dan, you love this horse. I ain't giving you no tree fitting. Dan, you love this monster. I ain't giving you no tree fitting. <laughs> Lock this monster, uh, you bastard. Uh, so apparently, uh, the Mega Drive uh, version runs even faster than the SNES version, making the game even harder. They did plan a Game Boy Advance version years later, but it got canceled, along with a TurboGrafx CD version that was also canceled for unknown reasons. Um, they have the same background music as the PC version. Um... Apparently, they have different openings, though, on console compared to the PC. Interesting. This game does move fast, but it's not bad. It's not bad, yeah. it's not bad at all. I mean, you yeah, can no. jump a little I mean, uh, For an Amiga game, this isn't total crap. I wasn't going to say, I'm actually kind of getting into this. This is This is really not bad at all. Yeah. It's kind of a hack and slash platformer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't give it a ten, but no, not it's not anywhere near a ten. But it's definitely not like a one. Huh. A remastered version of the game came out in uh, 2018 for Windows, uh, as well as Xbox and Steam in 2019. Uh, hell. Switch PS4 in 2020, apparently. Although licensing restrictions prevented the distribution of the remaster past March 2022. Okay, so you can't get wah, it no wah. more. Yep. That's a shame. God darn. Oh, well. I would have bought this. It would have been a good just sitting around game. You know, yeah. you know, just and you like know, a, the Joe and Mac remaster. <laughs> this is actually, yeah. I this is something I like about these roulettes is you come across games that you would never know about, and it's like, oh, it's good. Yeah, occasionally, you stumble upon something and you're like, it's not bad, it's not bad. I would, yeah. uh, yeah, I would definitely play this. I mean, not for hours on end, but you know couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. 
I mean, I would seriously slow everything down a bit. You know what I mean? This guy moves like a freaking tornado. He moves like a sloth with AIDS. <laughs> Yay. You beat World 2. Hi. <laughs> Damn, Decent that's retro that's... sale uh, going on right now. On uh, on Switch for some stuff. Cotton oh, Fantasy is ten bucks. Cotton hundred percent is seventy five. Yeah, I'm glad I get paid tomorrow. Yeah, I get paid on Thursday. Ooh, some uh, some of these are uh, freaking on sale too. Both Puzzle Bobble Busta Move sixteen bit console versions on sale. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Uh, oh, Joe Mac the Caveman Ninja. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, the uh, the remake with the uh, cartoony uh, drawing style, Gravity yeah. Circuit. Uh, Damn, a lot of good shit on sale. Huh. I t- today or uh, yesterday I bought uh, Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. Oh yeah, um, I've got that on uh, PS4. That's really I good. A, I, I got it on PS5. I downloaded that. That's what I'm going to be playing tomorrow. What exactly um, is a Rondo of Blood anyway? It's a Castlevania game. No. Yeah, but but like a Rondo is a music thing. Like it's it's something that kind of goes in circles and it's Rondo. That's that that it repeats the same line over uh, over and over. It's a Rondo of Blood. Rondo. Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood. Hey, uh, hey look, look here, Fry Man. What is, what is a man but a miserable pilot? Yeah, you know what? It, it don't matter. None of this, this matters. matters. Wiggle, wow. Wiggle, wiggle, wow. I'm going to rock your body, Red Seas, to the break of dawn. <laughs> Uh, that's po- that's poetry, baby. I'm gonna rock you all night, baby. <laughs> hey, I saw uh, Ford. At, I saw Ford at '86, and they kicked ass. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, we all know a guy like Carl. At some yep. point in our lives, it's true. We all know him. I think that's kind He's of the cool. point. Everybody, everybody knows a Carl. They're, they're they're cool in their own way, but they're complete losers nonetheless. I woke out at the home. <laughs> Ooh, Gear Simulator is on sale right now. Gear. Yeah, no, it's it's Deer, but with four E's. Oh, I see. Yeah, your average every day, uh, your average every every deer, deer game, deer simulator. I I rather play not deer simulator. Uh, I I like goat simulator, but deer simulator is also good. Have you ever heard of a not deer? A Nazi deer? <laughs> a not deer. Look it up. It's pretty. It's it's not- encrypted. It's it's pretty a uh, not- interesting. A Nazi a not deer. deer. Just- just by Rudolph the Red Rudolph the Redner's reindeer going, Heil, Heil Santa. Not, not, a, not a Nazi deer, a N-O-T deer. Uh, people have like had sightings of these things, and apparently it, you uh, sh- it, yeah, their their eyes are not on the Whoa. side of their head. Oh, stop jumping for like second. herbivores are. Okay. They're they're in the front like a predator. And uh yeah, they look like a deer, but once you get a good look at them, you're like, that's not a deer. Hence the term, not deer. That's not the normal. I know. It's, yeah. Yeah. You should it's, it's It's a cryptid, and it's... Yeah. I don't yeah. know what to say. It's a mark is hard, though. I've never, uh, <laughs> never, never, never seen one, and I hope I never do. Now I'm in the stool. Oh, poor. Oh, no. Why are you kids with those ears and those tails? 
That's not normal. I normal normal. Look at you. Maybe we are dogs with floppy tails, and I don't remember the exact. Harry the platypus. Maybe we are dogs, cute little dogs, <laughs> and little tails that we can wag. Let's go quit your skills with a play tag. You know, I would like to. I would like to see a crossover between Animaniacs and Doof and Schmerz. I think that is. You're also Dragon Blisses. <laughs> what are you? Dragon Blisses? What are you? I'm sure probably though you could be Dragon Blisses. <laughs> Wait a minute, Roy Watson, what are you doing here? Wait a minute, Perry, the Dragon Blisses are actually Dragon Blisses. Yeah, Japanese words are Platypus. What is the Japanese word for platypus? Komono hashi. Komono hashi. I'm waiting for a red which, sword. Which is spelled in katakana as a like foreign word uh, because komono hashi actually can be a real like name spelled out in kanji, uh, meaning duck bridge. Duck, Duck Bridge. bridge. Woohoo! Oh, Lord, I'm driving. Yeah, oh, I, I found that out feathers. because there's that uh, anime, Ron Komonohashi. Ah. Yeah, which is, which is a man, rather fun uh, rather fun take on uh, the uh, Sherlock myth. L let, let, me, let me put it uh, at this. If that, if, if Platypuses would have been in Japan. They would have thought they were yokai. Oh, they would have. They would have thought they were yokai. Oh, I mean, you know, yeah, they look like one. I mean, you look at a tanuki, you're like, that's a yokai. You look at them, they're just <laughs> weird animals. They they got a duck bill and a beaver tail, and they lay eggs, and they're, they're poisonous. Yeah, they're venomous. It's like, jeez. What God like made everything that, he's about like, a platypus screams real life yokai. When God made that animal, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to make everybody wonder and think with this one. <laughs> it was like he had leftover parts and just put them all together. That's actually the myth about it. He had leftover parts, and that's what. <laughs> just take a beaver and give him a duck's bill. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. I'll be yeah. Right back. Hey, what the fuck you want me to do? Shop. What the fuck happened? Uh, Yay. Level one completed. Wait, you completed level one after completing level two? It was world one, two, and three. So this was level one world, um, whatever. Okay. So that means I completed the whole, the, the city portion. I'm actually gonna. Uh, we're gonna pause it here. Uh, thoughts on gods, Dane? Th this was really good. I kind of wish I knew about this back when I was back when I was just a guy, because I would have definitely bought this game and played it. Very good. Uh, Billy is left, right? Yeah. Uh, Jason. Uh, you know what? Not a bad game. Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly good. Uh, I mean, uh, for for something that was originally on freaking like Euro PCs, I'm kind of shocked. This actually is a decent console game. Yep, I agree. Uh, this is very good. Uh, like I said during gameplay, it was giving me Duke Nukem One and Two vibes, which is not a bad thing at all. Those games were quite good for their time, and this one is also quite good. I am very surprised. And I would consider this a hidden gem. Scores out of 10, Dane. Eight. Jason. Seven. I'm going to give it an eight as well. Oh my God, I'm brilliant. I used to be fat. Thanks, Billy. And that means we have one more game to play this episode, so let's get to it. Not an expensive game either. Uh, guys. On Genesis, you guys. can find it for about 1886. Guys. What? Why, why, why? Spice! Why, <laughs> Spice? Spice?
Oh, Wing Commander? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, there's 16 bit Tim Curry now. Spies! Oh. Uh, Mark Hamill was in the uh, game, too, I think. Yes. It's me, the Joker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> copy of this game will set you back only eight forty one. Yikes. It's only eight hundred. The Sega CD versions, uh, the Sega CD versions, worth more. Twenty-one forty-five. Sweet. Also, uh, hold on a second. I'm having problems with uh, Discord on my phone. It's crashing. Okay. <laughs> That's great, Bill. Thanks. <laughs> what is life right now? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Belly on up, friend, and take a load off. You must be gotta pee. I'm shot. <laughs> Welcome aboard the club. Why? 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 Used to be a pilot myself. So the flea bag shot me up so bad I couldn't fly. I guess I flew with most every pilot on the claw. So if you want to know how one pilot or another flies, old shot glass is the guy to ask. Stop by when you're off duty and we'll talk more. No. I don't want to. Oh, Hardy, take a seat and have a chat with old paladin. I recall once when I was just a lieutenant like yourself there. We were flying really? patrol at Cord, the fourth planet in the Alliance system. <laughs> These four kill Rothy Salfy. <laughs> oh <laughs> lord. With the sun at their box. What is the oh, point, really? monsieur? Is it, there is one we. I was leading up to it, lass. That day we learned that a Southie will always turn to the left. It's got something mm -hmm. to do with the way or the engines and ducks are arranged. So when you tell a Southie, watch to the left. That's where he go when he makes his break. Okay. What game is this? Wing Commander. Oh. Bonjour, Lieutenant. You are called Gutta P, no? <laughs> I am uh, called Angel. <laughs> you. Usually I just name thing name my character after things I, I hear, and what I heard was Billy saying, Gotta P. So I wrote yeah. it. I'm just reviewing some figures <laughs> on our recent encounters with the Kerati. Kerati. You, you would Kerati. like to know what I have learned, perhaps? The Drowfi is the Kerati fighter most seen in this sector. These figures Kerati show fighter? that 1.4 missiles are required to destroy the Drowthy. while over 7 direct laser hits are necessary to destroy the same vessel. I, hope this, I hope this information is lieutenant for you useful. I mean, weapons. fuck. I mean, fuck. Can we bang her? Maybe. <laughs> I would. You know what? You, got to, you can finish this episode yourself. Goodbye. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, Dane. <laughs> you know what? How about you shut the fuck up? You will bang her right in that bed, right there. It's the briefing room. So, uh, a bucket yeah. of piss. This was originally a DOS game in 1990. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, then then the SNES got it in '92, followed by the Amiga in your uh, system. Then the Amiga CD, the Amiga CD32 in '93, Sega CD in '94, Mac in '95, and then eventually Windows '95 in '96. Are we sure this is a, Are we sure this is SNES roulette, not Amiga roulette? <laughs> I know, right? A lot of Amiga games came out. 
Blue Angel Squadron yeah. at first patrol. You killer bees have the next shift. Uh, you be Brian Blair. <laughs> and the other one. Uh, you rookies will be flying with experienced pilots on your first missions. Everybody only remembers B. Jim Brian Bron Blair. Right? Jump in Jim, Jim Brunzel. Bron that's it. What the rookies Apparently to fly the as wing leaders. were heavily inspired by the Kazinti of Larry Niven's known space universe. Holiday Hoobie Wuddy. Here are the assignments. The ass assignments. Gotta pee. You're leading Alpha Wing. <laughs> Spirit will fly on your wings. She's quiet, but she knows the ropes. She's totally Shade not Pocahontas. You're the wing leader. If Spirit talks, you be sure and listen. Got it? Yes, sir. Good. Here's your patrol plan, then. Computer display alpha. Nuggets. You'll check three possible jump points at about 20,000 clicks out. There are asteroids near nav points two and three, so stay on course. Any questions? Yes, come yeah, on. Can I? What are we to do if we encounter the enemy? <laughs> Engage if the odds look good. Let God of P make a call. <laughs> Next is Beta Wing. Apparently, uh, most recent game to come out in the Wing Commander franchise was in 2007. Wow, that's been a while. So that was uh, Wing Commander Arena. Nearly 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah 17 yeah, years ago. Yeah, on the air, Xbox 360. This is no train sim. If you see the enemy, he'll be out to destroy you. Be sure you do it to him <laughs> before he does it to you. Shazam. Yes, uh, sir. I have one more question. Where's Tim Curry? Can we bang spirit? Uh, 13 episode animated series aired on USA and then, Network and then spirit in says, 1996. How? And I reply, in the butt, of course. <laughs> uh, Wing Commander Academy featured the voice cast of uh, Mark Hamill, Tom Wilson, and Malcolm McDowell all reprising their roles from the game. That's a good game. I have it. Uh, and then uh, the, the movie in 1999, uh, directed yeah. by Chris Roberts, uh, creator of the game series, stars... Freddie Prince Jr., Saffron Burroughs, Matthew Lillard, Chucky Cario, Jurgen Prochnow, and David Warner. And it was terrible. Yep, diverging from the uh, established universe, it was a critical and commercial failure. Failure? I mean, for people who were... Failure. Failure. And for people that uh, were fans of the game franchise, they're like... This is terrible. I mean, they could have used Mark Hamill and, uh, and, and what's what's I, crazier though is the fact that they had both. I have to get going, and I'm doing something. Sure thing, dude. All right. No worries. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, Dane. Thank you. Love you. Kind of crazy that freaking both Freddy and Shaggy are both in this movie, though. Yeah. Then they were to be in another movie. Again, with each other. Twice more after that. Yep. Summer Catch. Yeah, well, yeah, Summer Catch. And then Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo 2. Yep. Seems like and uh, she's all that. Oh yeah! They did. She's all that before uh, Wing Commander. Oh god, that movie was terrible. I, it was all those teen chick flicks at that point in time. Yeah. It, it was. It, they were. It was. It, it was. It, it was always Smash Mouth music. In it. Enemy ships. Oh no. Late, see, 90s. Uh, Late 90s, early 2000s was a weird era. 
To stretch the film's budget, they limited the film's setting to the interiors of spaceships with filming done in two sound stages in Luxembourg uh, to evoke similar feelings of claustrophobia felt in Das Boot. Uh, the film served as a prequel to the games, so Mark Hamill was deemed too old to reprise his role. Uh, producers had planned on having Malcolm McDowell reprise his role as Admiral Tolwyn, but McDowell became unavailable due to commitments to the Fantasy Island remake. Uh, in order to be released prior to Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, the crew needed to truncate production schedule from the planned 10 to 12 months down to 6 months. This movie didn't have a chance. Yeah. Uh... Digital Anvil's initial plan of producing all the effects uh, uh, shots themselves adjusted so certain effects could be farmed out to third-party effects houses. Freddie Prince Jr. later said, I can't stand Wing Commander. I can't watch one scene of that movie. I read the script and loved it. So did my buddy Matthew Lillard. We both got the parts. We went on location and they said, here's the new script. And it was a piece of crap. So in other words, they had a fake script that was good and then gave them the crap. Yeah. Uh, Roberts cast actors that bore little physical resemblance to those who previously held the part. Uh, Paladin went from being a thin, fair-haired man in Wing Commander 1 and 2, voiced by Martin Davies, to being a large, dark-haired Scotsman in Wing Commander 3 and 4, played by John Rhys Davies, to having oh, a French accent in the movie, played by Cario. That is radically different between all three portrayals. Jesus. Yeah. You know, this, this franchise could use a reboot. You know, the thing is, when I looked at the cover of, you know, Wing Commander, I saw that yeah. uh, fam family video one year, and I looked at it yeah. and I went, oh, that's got to be bad. I mean, just by looking at the cover. <laughs> the 3D Space Combat Simulator. I mean, it had three people on it. It had the hot chick, Matthew Lillard, and... The hot chick, Matthew Lillard? Okay, who are the other two? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Mike. Here's the crazy thing. This actually got a sequel on SNES. Uh-huh. Well, the game don't look bad. I mean... a shooter. It's a Sega CD version got a positive review. A great storyline with cinematic animation and digitized speech giving the game the feel of a big screen space opera. Uh, oh. with, this, this even got a remake on the 3DO. Which apparently was really bad. Well, the nice 3DO was really bad. True. We we should have a 3DO roulette. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> Jaguar roulette. Jesus. There's actually... There's some good games on the Jaguar. Tiger Gamecom roulette. We'd be done in, like, three episodes. That's true. <laughs> that Next April Fools. Did you know that there, they, there is Tiger handheld game emulators whoops yes i knew about that and i have played them and, Our let, me zone you, roulette. and let me tell you uh they're actually not half bad it's actually better to play them like that than it is on the actual machines yeah yeah we're here to get paid tribute to one of our own second two lieutenant gotta pee it's always said to lose a pilot <laughs> especially as difficult when he is young as gotta pee he died without even a chance to pee Company, attention, prepare arms, prepare legs, he had to pee. farewell, gotta pee, you'll be missed. Fire, fire, fire! <laughs> Is that 21 gun salute? I guess so. Is there six of them in that row? Or seven of them in that row? Seven of them? Yeah. 
Then it was a 21 sun glute. It's 21 gun salute. Sun, I have a 20, sun glute. 21, 21 sun, sun glute. glute. <laughs> There's your episode title. I no, Well, it can't be because it's roulette, but yeah. It can't be because it's a roulette. The subtitle. 21, 21 sun sun glute. glute. Anyway. Sun glute. <laughs> that's a, everybody shut up about my mistakes. And uh, thoughts on Wing Commander, Jason. <laughs> You know, I mean, the PC game is is certainly like a WoW type thing. Uh, no, that's World of Warcraft. Be you know, <laughs> P- PC uh, uh, PC would of course get like you know two, three, four, you know, like games later on down the line that would be even better. Um, you know, simulation games are really tough to do on a console back then. You know, like. Trying to limit yourself to the buttons of the controller versus like having a whole keyboard and mouse or having a freaking like flight stick, big difference. So, I mean, they did the best that they could with what they had, and apparently it was good enough to get a sequel. So, I mean, I'll give it that much. Uh, But yeah, I, I would have been like bored to tears playing this game and going like, what am I supposed to be doing? Where am I going? Like, you know, Star Fox the Saint. Billy. Soon galoot. Um I uh Yeah, it's 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 space stuff. Okay. I know I know nothing about this series that much. Yeah, I know next to nothing about it, but it was it was fairly enjoyable. It wasn't like terrible to control or difficult to control. I was able to kill a couple of the uh, enemy ships there before I uh, slammed headfirst into a meteor and died, um, which is probably how I would really die in real life if I was flying a plane. Let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fine. Scores out of ten, Jason. Uh, five. Billy. Five. I will also give it a five. On this edition of the show, we played Wizardry 5, Gods, and Wing Commander. Best game of the episode, Jason. Ooh. Um. You know what? I'll give it the Gods. Uh. Yep. Billy. Gods. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gods on this one. Gods wins. Thank you for joining us for this edition of uh, Ritual Roulette. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe. (laughs) <laughs> right? If you like what we do, please hit subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Dan Ford, Joan, Jason, Amherst, and Billy Carter, I'm Mike Riley saying see you next time on Retro Roulette. Retro Roulette.